hi 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 students welcome back to another lesson in today's lesson we'll be looking at functions and more specifically we're going to be looking at mapping diagrams now before we go into the details have you ever wondered or have you ever given much thought to this question what does baking a cake computers and math have in common think about it do they have anything in common i believe so when baking a cake you put your ingredients together you combine them then you put them in an oven and then the oven produces a cake <laughs> so to speak right so too with computers, with computers, especially when typing, you input a value, so you put in something, so you type in a word or a phrase, the computer processes that information and then produces the result on the screen, which is what we call an output. So in this case, the ingredients will be the input, the thing that you put in, mix them together and put them in the baking tin. The processing would be the oven, the oven has to heat it up, um, make everything steam, simmer down, <laughs> whatever the baking terminology is. And then the output is the cake or the result. Now, in math, we have a similar principle where you have a domain a function and a range and we're going to go into detail with that you have a domain which is a value that goes some that goes through some processing and produces another value called a range and it must be saying miss hamilton is perplexing my mind don't worry let's go into some details so the key terms some terms that we learned just moments ago let's go into details with them and if you notice i said that these are the simplified version these are very very simple definitions um somewhat of an oversimplification but it's just for the purpose of this lesson so the domain when i speak of domain I speak of the x value or what we call the input values those are the value that goes into um i'm going to use the term equation or an operation as i said i'm using these terms loosely very this is an oversimplification all right so that's the domain the input values are what we call the x values when we speak of a function simply put we're talking about like the, the, the operation the math operation but mainly we're talking about the relationship between one value and the next. So a function, you can think of it as a math operation, but mainly it is a relationship between one value and the next. And we're going to look at how this works in the next example. The final term that we looked at was range. And range, if we remember from the previous activity, from the previous slide, the domain is the input, the function is the processing, so the range would be the output, right? So the range is the y values. And let us look at how all these relate, the domain, the function, and the range, and how does that relate to math? Firstly, before I move on, let me point out that when we speak of a range, we're not speaking about statistics. I remember teaching you about mean, mode, median, and range, but that's not the range we're speaking of in this sense. This is a totally different topic. So range here relates to, does not relate to uh, the statistics range. All right? Good. I had to point that out. All right. So we're looking at how domain function and range relate always think about it as an input process output function or an input process and output 
So let us look at some examples. We have the numbers 3 and 4, and we'll call those our input values. And remember, our input values means the same thing as domain good. And we're going to do something with the 3 and the 4, and the function that we're going to use is add. So when we put 3 and 4 together and we add them, what's our output? What's our result value? 7. Very good. So basically, this is saying, or this function overall is saying, 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. All right? Let's look at another example. We have a 3 here. That's our input value. What's another name for input value again? Domain. Awesome. And we're going to put it through or run it through our, our processor, our function. What's our function here? Square. So when you square something, you multiply it by itself once. All right. So you're going to multiply 3 by itself, 3 times 3. Multiply by itself twice. Did I say once? Sorry about that. And the result is 9. So 3 times 3 gives us 9. So 3 squared is the function. 3 squared equals 9. All right. Now, this is exactly what I mean about functions. The input values are the domain. They're color-coded. And the function is the operator and the operation and the range is the result and that's all you need to know at this point in time about domain function and range domain is the input the function consider it to be the operation and the range is the output or the resulting y values now let's look a bit at mapping No, when we map, think of mapping as matching. Every element from the domain or, or the input value matches a value in the range. Now, when we're dealing with mapping, we have different types and, the, and, 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 and it speaks to the different types of functions. So we have a one-to-one -one function. What does what do you think one-to-one -one function means? It means that you have one value in the domain that matches or maps onto one value in the range. So one element in the domain matches one element in the range. And this is what we call a one-to-one -one function. One element from the domain is mapped to one element in the range. Another kind of function is many to one, meaning you have one, two, or more. You have two elements from the domain matching to one element in the range. So many to one. So in this case, they use many to mean more than one, essentially. So you have more than one element mapping to one element. All right. As long as you have one case of that happening, we will call it many to one. Because you notice in the other example, you have one element. In the domain matching one element in the range one element in domain watching one element in the range but as long as there's one example of more than one elements matching one more than one elements in the domain matching one element in the range we will call that a many to one function but there are some cases where it is not a function. And this is important. This is what you need to know. 
whenever you are finding a function, one x value should only point to one y value, meaning you cannot have a, an arrow from an x or from the domain pointing to more than one values in the range. Now let's just look on this first example. You have this one and it's pointing to a five and it's also pointing to a six. That is a no, no. Only one arrow should be moving from the domain to the range. All right? If it is that you have an example where you have more than one arrows coming from the same number in the domain, it is not a function. Let me say that again. If it is that you have more than one arrows moving from a single number in the domain, it is not a function. It can only be a function if you have one arrow moving from one element in the domain. All right. Let us try some examples. Let's look on this and tell me if this is a function or not. That's all we're going to be doing in this lesson. We're going to identify if the mapping diagram shows a function or not. So remember, in order for it to be a function, you have to have one arrow moving from one element in the domain to a range. So as long as there's one arrow coming from each element in the domain, it is a function. So you have one arrow moving from the one to the zero, you have another arrow moving from the 3 to the 5, another arrow from the 5 to the 9, and another from the 9 to the 9. So each element has one arrow. Each element in the domain has one arrow moving away from it. So we would say that this is a function. It is a function. All right, and remember when we speak of domain, we mean the input values and the range mean the output values. Let's look at another example. Is this a function? Remember, in order for the mapping diagram to show a function, you need to have one arrow moving from each element in the domain. Look at the 10. How many arrows are moving from the 10? Two. So right here we can say that it is not a function. Even though the other numbers here have an arrow moving from the domain, all of the other numbers only have one arrow moving from the domain to the range. There is a single element that does not have one arrow. So because of this one element that has two arrows, we will say it is not a function. Good. One last example for today.